Uh, even as we talk about the Iranian buildup uh, in their nuclear technology and presumably nuclear weapons eventually, um, the United States is considering a, a, a rather substantial build down in our nuclear stockpile. What do you think of the president's uh, proposal? Well, it's not just considering. I mean, this new start means that's what we're doing. And let me just address a couple of things. Uh, first of all, it's somewhat skewed to the topic, but in the nuclear uh, posture review, uh, which is an official document and the policy of the United States, which is actually being executed, one of the things, just as an example of how crazy... This is the, the new one you're talking about. The new about. one, yeah. so of how crazy it is is that we have guaranteed that we will not use nuclear weapons against a state or non-state actor that attacks us with weapons of mass destruction as long as they're not nuclear. In other words, we can undergo a biological or chemical attack which would kill scores of millions of people, and we have promised as official policy that we will not use nuclear weapons against this the state that, that is found to have sponsored it. Uh, Which it, amounts to a kind of open invitation. It's an open yeah. invitation. We, we used to at least make it uncertain. We would refuse to rule it out, which was uh, proper. I mean, after all, it is a kind of a tit for tat, and it's a tremendous deterrent. Right. But we now say we won't do it. Instead, the nuclear, uh, the NPR says, uh, and NPR is just coincidental, <laughs> says uh, we will instead rely on massive conventional response which, of course, will, will scare the bejesus out of them, as it did with Iraq, Afghanistan, and Vietnam, right? I mean, this is going to deter them, no. Uh, and also, we're reducing our conventional weapons. But to answer your question more specifically, um, we used to have uh, 30,000 30, or more warheads and thousands of delivery platforms. Now, with New START, we're reducing to 1,550 warheads and 600 delivery platforms maximum by, by treaty. With that that level of, of weaponry, there are several things that, that occur. One is that uh, it's much easier to have a first strike, therefore you have far less stability. If you reduce the number of targets drastically, as we have, tremendously, uh, literally by an order of magnitude, uh, then knocking them out in a first strike becomes that much more possible. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. The second thing is that uh, the, the document is pointed towards total abolition. If you have total abolition, then you have the tremendous incentive for someone to hide nuclear weapons so that then after a state which, which is, is responsible and, and honest and follows the treaty has rid itself of its own nuclear weapons, you can dominate the world with, by the way, the uh, amount of nuclear weapons that could fit in this room. Mm -hmm. It's easy to hide them. Then the, another factor is that... Um, if you, this is a, a lesser factor, and it's probably worth the risk, but the existence of nuclear weapons has, has kept the, uh, the lid on conventional warfare. Mm -hmm. If you get rid of nuclear weapons, which I think would probably be worth the risk, although not worth the risk of a breakout of hidden weapons or the first strike instability if you're just merely reducing them, uh, you, would, you would take the lid off the, the conventional warfare, which has been suppressed in this past half century mm -hmm. by the, or mm -hmm. more by the existence of nuclear weapons. And then there's something which is really important, which is that by reducing to a small number, small number of delivery platforms, we encourage proliferation. It not only excites the uh, ambitions of China, which is already you know, on, on, on a roll with, uh, and, and will be uh, equal to us or within 10 years, I think, in terms of nuclear mm -hmm. and, and maybe even conventional, but also smaller nations, which see suddenly that, yeah, well, we can achieve that. We can, we, you know, Iran, or can have actual nuclear parity with the United States. And that's mm -hmm. because we have not followed through with it. Our nuclear development has been not stagnant, but we've, we have reduced not only numbers but also the technology, the means of delivery, mm -hmm. the, the, all everything associated with it. So it stimulates proliferation around the world. And if you look, you see that it actually has stimulated. Before, they would look and see the United States has 30,000 warheads and the most incredible delivery systems. Mm -hmm. There's no point in us embarking upon this. As we have built down, I used to use a horrible expression, that has stimulated them to say, well, it's certainly possible for us. Is it... Um is it disturbing to you that Western civilization seems uh, already to be disarming in Western Europe and to be very fond of the idea, 
in the United States, despite the fact that the world remains a dangerous place? It's suicidal. Uh, in, in Western Europe, you know, it's uh, finiamo la comedia. It's, it's, they're, they're, they're finished. They're more or less out of the picture. Uh, in the United States... Even the Brits? Even the Brits. The, look, Britain uh, has fewer than 200 airplanes with which to defend itself. Fewer than 200 tanks. Uh, it's getting to be really defenseless. We have been disarming. Let me give you two examples of how, how we seriously we disarm. Take the F-22, the Raptor, mm -hmm. and the F-35. Um, now, the, the F-22 is the best airplane. These are fighter aircraft, fighter bomber. Fighter aircraft, no. yeah, American fighter aircraft. Yeah. F-22 is the best uh, fighter aircraft that's ever ma been made in the world. Um, and we were supposed to have 750 of them. It took us 20 years to research it and build it. And we did, and it's the best airplane that, that ever existed. Uh, but we stopped at 183, and then uh, we, we threw it away. The, uh, uh, the Chinese, the Indians, and the Russians all have fifth generation lines going. Mm -hmm. There's, on, the, on the left, they want us to, to get rid of the F-35. We've already gotten rid of the F-22. We shouldn't have gotten rid of the F-22. But why did we throw it away? Not because the F-35 is cheaper, than the F-22. No, I mean, well, they're all exceedingly expensive because what we do is we, we yeah. plan them to, to make X number, and then we reduce it so that we the unit costs rocket into the stratosphere. Right. But the perception is that we're in such tough economic times that we have to cut the military because we have no choice. Well, it may have been understandable in the Depression when we really were, were, were our backs were to the wall economically, but not now. And there's another fallacy, which is really very important, which is that it's the military expenditures which, which make us vulnerable to economic dislocation. Right, right. People say, well, well uh, you know, we have a bigger GMP, so it makes sense. But weapons are, are correspondingly more, more, yes. more expensive. Yeah. <clears throat> and the fact is that it's not justified as a... Military spending has a different relationship to economy than people think. During the Depression, the average unemployment was 19 percent. After we started spending 40 percent in 1944, the top number of our GDP on the military, 85 percent of the, of the budget, unemployment went down from 19 percent average in the 30s to 1.2 percent. The GMP grew by, by 270 percent in, in, in that period. Mm -hmm. And real income, because someone might say, well, what about inflation? real personal income grew during the war, even though we were devoting that enormous amount to military spending. It doesn't mean that military spending doesn't mean that the economy will be crippled. Right. But people also say, of course, that we're the only superpower now, and so the need to spend is less. That's people who haven't studied geography uh, or history, yeah, because what we have to do is so much different. If we were Switzerland, which, by the way, has an army which is uh, it's a reserve army mm -hmm. that's close to the size of ours. Uh, if we were Switzerland, we wouldn't have to spend that much money because we wouldn't have to project our power uh, mm -hmm. th throughout the world. Now, now, if you believe that that uh, we shouldn't do this, that we shouldn't be, as the, I hate the expression also, the world's policemen, mm -hmm. uh, which we are not, we are simply helping to guarantee stability in the world. And and I don't, I'm not for a promiscuous use of U.S. power. I'm very carefully guarded U.S. use of U.S. power. But if we don't participate as one of the great powers in the international system, guaranteeing the freedom of navigation, protecting allies, then what will happen is war will expand throughout the world. You know, if we, if we can't support an ally, for instance, if we are deterred by an Iranian nuclear weapon from defending an ally somewhere in the Middle East, then another power next to it which may have its own mm -hmm, uh, sure. interests, will more easily invade it. There will be war throughout the world in, in many different instances, and it can snowball into bigger wars if there, are not, if there is not a balance of power. Uh, and, and we have been the, the primary guarantor of that balance of power in the past half century, which has been a relatively peaceful half century.